Welcome back. As we saw before the break, Immaculata took out St. Paul's in the quarterfinal matchup in Double A boys basketball. They're on to the semifinals now, but would face a considerably tougher test as they go up against top-seeded Ashbury. Ashbury in their quarterfinal matchup took out last year's champs Maravell and are undefeated on the regular season and would be the favorites to find their way into the finals. Immaculata's number nine, Yusuf Fomani, used his speed to get around Ashbury's defender and then showed off his moves as he gave the Saints an early 4-2 lead. Only a few seconds later, Ashbury's number 22, Noah Kirkwood, found teammate Lloyd Pandy all alone, and Pandy wasted no time adding three to Ashbury's total to put them up 5-4. During the last minute of the first quarter, the Colts' Kirkwood played the role of setup man again, this time feeding number 10, Simon Hicks, who made his three-point shot, putting Ashbury up 15-6. The Saints number seven, Quinton Puckworth, tried to provide a spark to his team with a big dunk, but Immaculata still trailed 21-11. Ashbury's number seven, Lloyd Pandy, drove to the hoop and fought off the Saint defenders to put his team up 28-15. Early in the third quarter, Immaculata moved the ball around well, and number six, Alex Avin, made the trade to close the deficit to 13 points. But Ashbury could throw from downtown as well, as number 22, Kirkwood, calmly drained his shot to make the score 37-24 for the Colts. Kirkwood then found number 26, Nick Tooley, wide open, who increased the score to 43-26. Tooley would then get a chance to show off his speed as he blew past the defender to put Ashbury in front by 20 points, 51-31. Ashbury easily took this one, 59-39, to maintain their perfect record, and with the win, they advanced to the championship game. In the other semi-final, Woodruff got off to a quick start against Franco West as number 21, Mohamed Omar, sunk the three-point shot to put the Tigers up 5-0. Not long after, the Tigers got another tray, this time from number 13, Nick Chatter, and Woodruff led 8-0. Franco West started clawing their way back thanks to a great end-to-end -end carry from number 21, Rudy Bea, and the Vikings now trailed 12-8. The Vikings number 13, Vince Dijala, picked up the loose ball under his own basket and went the distance and easily beat the Tiger ambush to bring Franco West within two as they trailed 15-13. Franco West took the lead late in the first quarter when Bea made his shot from downtown to put the Vikings ahead, 18-17. Woodruff's number 55, Slady Joseph, needed a couple of tries but finally managed to pull in the rebound and Woodruff now trailed 21-19. The Vikings number 21, Bea, stole the ball and ran up court for the uncontested layup as Franco West widened their lead 30-21. Despite being surrounded by orange jerseys, Bea still managed to come up with the rebound and Franco West now led 35-29. Woodruff's number 23, Caleb Comer Subotic, showed his own determination inside the paint to bring the Tigers within four. Franco West led 37-33 at the half. Hassan Konate, number four for Woodruff, made his long shot for two to put the Tigers back in front, 45-43. Franco West's Bea took the ball away from Woodruff and went in alone to make the layup and tie the score at 52 apiece. Number 15, Mukenga, found who else but Rudy Bea, and Bea promptly scored three more for the Vikings to put them in front, 55-54. Franco West went on to win 62-54 and advanced to the championship game against Ashbury. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Megan Elson. Over to boys single A, double A hockey now. We're into the semifinals and we've got Kareen Wilson battling it out with St. Joe's. Now both these teams haven't had a great season. Kareen Wilson's on a six game losing streak right now, but they're actually the higher seed due to some early season success. These two teams did meet up once in the regular season and they tied, so this could end up being quite a competitive matchup. Green Wilson's number 27, Aiden Gray, had the first chance of the game as he carried the puck from his own zone, but Jaguars goalie Stefano Federoco was up to the task. St. Joe's number 18, Eric Kingsley's shot gave the Wildcats goalie, Kyle Godin, a bit of a hard time, but Godin was quick to pounce on the rebound and keep the Jaguars off the board. With time winding down the first period, the Jaguars number 22, Jawad Abdul, was sent in alone on the breakaway but Gaudin came up huge to keep the game scoreless after one. To start the second, St. Joe's number 27 Nick Dunnan beat the Kareen Wilson defenders, but his high shot was gloved by Gaudin. A 
few seconds after, St. Joseph wouldn't be denied as number 87 Calvin O'Driscoll found the rebound at the side of the net and buried it to give his Jaguars a 1-0 lead. Midway through the second, number 27 Dunnan's wrister from inside the point went through the traffic, off the iron and in to give St. Joe's a 2-0 lead after two periods. Early in the third, the Wildcats got on the board as number 27, Aiden Gray, found number 10 all alone and his wrist shot found the left corner of the net to pull Kareen Wilson within one. Late in the third, Gray came down the wing hoping to tie the score, but Federco wasn't letting anything get by him. St. Joseph would hang on to win the semifinal 2-1 over Kareen Wilson and book their ticket to the championship series. For High School Sports Zone, I'm Ashley McDonald. And in the other semifinals, St. Pius took care of business over Osgood by a score of 3-1. to one. On next week's edition of the program, we'll have playoff action in boys basketball and girls tier 1 volleyball, so I hope you can join us for that. I wish you all a great weekend, and we'll see you soon.